welcome back to That Paradox Computing. And today we're checking out the uh, Ender Chest Code Cracker. It's a program I've written which will basically cycle through every combination on an Ender Chest and steal its contents. So this is good if maybe you lost something in an Ender Pouch or an Ender Chest, you can't remember which one it was. This will retrieve your items. Or if you want to steal from your friends on a server, you terrible person. Um, so, how does it work? Um, it's obviously using computer craft, um, but what we've got here is the computer can actually change the colors on a chest using open peripherals. So if you've got the open peripherals mod and computer craft, you can do this. Um, and basically it's using a uh, build craft gate, uh, so one of these guys, um, on a transport pipe, bit of wooden transport pipe, and it's set up to detect if there's an item in an inventory and a re emit a redstone signal, if so. Um, and then, uh, yeah, there's some oh, red alloy, alloy wire on the computer. Um, so the computer will, um, yeah, basically just keep this cycling through until it finds items in an inventory. Um, and when this does activate, uh, it will just sit there waiting for something to suck the items out of the chest. Yeah, so let's pop some items in these chests uh, here, and we'll just uh, put, yes, uh, there we go. Um, and we can see it in action. So what I'll do is, I will reboot the computer, uh, and we'll start from the top. So here it goes, it's going through, and bam, it's found items in um, white, white, pink. And you'll see on the screen, it also displays items found in white, white, pink. And this chest is uh, this item, um, this item node, no, transfer node, thank you, sorry. Transfer node is um, just going to suck all the items out. So you can put whatever you want here. Oh, we've got something in white, orange, white now as well, which is that other chest there. And you can see on the screen it's displayed white, orange, white. So it keeps a record um, until the computer restarts. It keeps a record of uh, where it's found stuff, so you might want to remember that for later. Now that you know what frequency someone is using to transport all their precious diamonds. Um, nice. So, uh, is there anything else? Well, we'll just take a quick look at the code. Um, the code's uh, really just a, a bunch of nested for loops. Um, so, basically what you got, this little bit just automatically detects a chest. So, the chest can be on any side, so can this redstone signal can be coming from any side. Um, this is just the way I've got it set up, but the program should be adaptive, so you can have the chest underneath it, on top of it, in front of it, whatever. And the redstone signal can touch it anywhere. In any means, you don't have to use one of these red alloy, uh, alloy wires, you can use whatever, a red, just even redstone dust, I don't know, whatever. Anything that will get a uh, redstone signal from there to there. Um, cool. So, um, yeah, so that just finds the uh, chest. This one um, is, okay, so this is the main body of the text, uh, the, the text, main body of the code. And um, so it's just, as you can see, it's these uh, three nested four loops. And um, basically, so if you imagine this outside for loop um, is cycling from one to 15, right? Um, and what it's doing is it's, uh, this one is affecting this one here. Now, if you saw the colors were changing here, so loop through all the colors on this one, then once it's done that, it will change color on this one. It'll loop through all of these again and then change that on that one and keep doing that until this one finally needs to loop back to white and at which time this one will change. Does that make sense? I hope so. So basically, this, this outer for loop will only go after this one's completed all of its one through 15 and this one um, but it won't go until this one's completed all of its 1 through 15. As you can see, this is affecting button 1, button 2, button 3. So button uh, 1, button 2, button 3. Yeah. Um, cool. Hope that made sense. And then we're just basically waiting for events, uh, kicking off a timer. Uh, but yeah, really what we're waiting for is the redstone event. But if it doesn't get a redstone event, the timer will keep it going then. Um, the redstone event obviously being from this gate when it detects an item in the chest. This is just printing that stuff up on up on the screen, those three colors. Um, so you can see here it's uh, setting the background color to whatever button three is, or whatever button two is, button one, and just printing that up on the screen. Um, and then we're just waiting if, because I kicked off that timer, um, 
if we've already um, had the event of redstone, but then the timer goes off, well, we don't want that making the program resume. So we're just um, making it wait for another event in that case. So the chest has time to empty. And that's it, guys. That's how it works. Um, and yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, I made another program using the colors on ender chests where you can just set it um, by touching a touch screen panel. So um, check out my channel for that if you want that. It doesn't use dye or anything. You can just uh, press on the screen and it goes. Looks kind of cool. They've got a lot of other contraptions on my um, channel. I'm going to have a with us farm. Um, about to come up there, which is pretty cool using spatial IO. Um, yeah, check it out if you're so inclined. Also, like and subscribe if that's a jam. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I will catch you next time. Cheers.